Okay. Um, hey, welcome everyone. This is the U.S. Chess School. Uh, very pleased to welcome back Grandmaster Elshan Moradi Abadi to the dojo, who will be teaching uh, today's class. Uh, and the theme for this latest series of lectures has been learning from uh, losses. So all the coaches have come in and shared with us some of their most instructive losses. Uh, we've got the class ready in Zoom. So without any further ado, let me throw it to Elshan. Okay, well, hello everyone. It's exciting to be here and I really appreciate the opportunity to be with Greg and uh, Kostia and uh, I hope you guys will enjoy it. I first want to start introducing this book to you because I, I actually had, I really like this topic and I would like to thank Greg for that. He, he didn't know probably that it's one of my main weaknesses to learn from my, from my losses, actually. I have a hard time to look, look at, looking at my losses, actually. So it forced me to do something I don't like to do. And, uh, and, uh, one thing is that I, I was always having a hard time, hard time dealing with my losses psychologically. So when I was in Iran and I was in the U S I, I, I read a lot of about sports psychology and dealing with losses and stuff. And there's this book that is written by the best sports psychologist, uh, how champions think this guy trained a lot of, uh, uh, golfers and, uh, also, uh, LeBron James, this is called, uh, Rob Rotella. He lives in Virginia. He works at Virginia tech. And he talks about how to actually improve uh, yourself when you have some weaknesses and you kind of reflect upon your mistakes, do not dwell up upon it, but learn from it and then internalize the knowledge that was missing or the skill that was missing and then move on. So, um, uh, one, one problem I have is that, uh, when I play an opening and it really exactly doesn't turn out the way I, I, uh, it, uh, the way I want it to turn out, I drop it and move on to the next line. That's has been always this. So I, I have a very too broad of a repertoire because I've been working on so many openings because I was trying to fill in a hole by, I don't know, starting something else on the side. So, but this one, this one was a good lesson for me because I tried to be thorough and I tried to learn from actually the game. This is a game. It's actually a very painful loss against uh, Sam Shankland. I played in 2017 and, uh, and uh, I played the line that I thought I, I, I would catch him by a surprise, but it's Sam. You cannot surprise Sam. I mean, come on. Okay, let's start with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And the inspiration, if you don't mind, I want to keep the live. Uh, is it is it too, too small, the board now? Oh, it's too small, right? Okay. No, that's fine. That's uh, fine. It's too small now. I want for a second. I want to tell you what's the motivation behind this uh, choosing this. It, oh, that's okay. okay. Board, board's fine, Alshon. Yeah, board's fine. Okay, just for a second. So bishop e5 expected. Then a6, uh, it was a bit of a surprise for him because I usually play knight f6 against the stronger players and stronger uh, higher rated GMs than myself. So I played a6. I wanted the fight because I was behind in the tournament. So knight f6, castle, uh, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, all the regular moves. Um, castle, c3. He also knew from my games that I never played the, the marshal. So I played d6, h3, uh, knight a5. Bishop c2, uh, c5, d4, and I played a uh, Smyslov Holmov system with knight d7, or I can, we can call it Keras too. And the game was was my motivation at the time, was played in 2017, a few months earlier. If I put by Elo White, I think Topalov lost the game to Anton Giharo. Where is, where is Topalov? Westland, where are you? Okay, here. This is the game. So uh, I'm just going to click on that. And let's just copy to the notation just, just to be sitting there. Um, so this was a game, it was played in 17 and he just cruised through the game. So I was thinking, okay, this not, not, shouldn't be bad. So I looked th a little bit uh, through the lines and I checked some of the correspondence games, engine analysis, of course, with, with, not with a very good computer, with my laptop. All right, sounds good. I played it. So we are still blitzing with, uh, Sam is also blitzing his moves, Not there. Okay, I don't need this anymore. Let me just move this away. Uh, oops, sorry. All right. So then, um, knight d2, uh, ed4, cd4. So here's the idea ed4, cd4, knight c6, d5. And this is the initial position. And here, white has three, uh, white has basically four options in this moment after knight c5, which are a4, knight x, e5, knight h2, and uh, queen e2. So queen e2. Is not a good move. 
I want to start with this. And I want to ask about a very famous concept in chess that who has, who has read the Voretsky, the first book, the end game, uh, the, no, no, sorry, the positional, is it called positional manual or the positional play? I don't remember exactly what is it called. But it's the first book with him and, and, and Yusupov. School of Future Champions. What's that? School of Future Champions. Is that the first one by the Voretsky? Oh, I mean, it could also be Secrets of Chess Training. It depends on which, which volume. The first one I know, the first one is, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it talks a lot about positional play and mm -hmm. he mentions, this is the very first concept after prophylactics. He first introduces prophylactics. This is the first concept he talks about in the book. And uh, now I, the question I want to ask, this, this one 22 is a loss of a tempo. And what is that? I, should I give them a couple of minutes maybe? Sure. About it? Okay. It's a loss of a tempo and why spends a tempo not fighting for e5 square which is a key square here so this is square e5 is the key square to fight for and white wastes the time not fighting for it this actually was played in a in a uh in a correspondence game so actually you would think that there's a merit into it but really not a good move so you can start writing down and i'm looking at it yeah someone just shared it okay yeah that's the fourth book but yeah Oh, I'm sorry. Well, this, yeah, this is the fourth book. Yeah, no, no, this is not in this one. No, no. I think you're right. I think the one Greg mentioned is the, is the right one. This is this isn't the one. No, no, there was no secret in that one. <laughs> well, no, it depends on which which volume. Um, there's an American version and there's like the original Russian version, which was yeah, they were probably. translated differently. Mm -hmm. So, someone says before a five that makes sense it's a meaningful idea but you're not really th thinking about the e5 square now white wants to, when you go before you have to remember you are weakening if you go before you're weakening this square and then he can maybe capture play f4 and then i can land on c4 and that's not very fun to play so, so just to clarify you're saying if if black puts the pawn on b4 we've yeah, made I a weakness on c4 yeah, yeah this is the knight away and then the knight and then the knight jumps into c4 and is very happy yeah this bishop is going to be very happy, and it's going to be a heck of a party, actually. <laughs> uh, so, like, one point, we're going to go e5, yeah. opening the bishop. Okay. 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 Uh, so, in here, any other answers? f5. The problem with f5 in this moment is that this bishop is, is blocked, right, by this knight. So, if I go f5, it just he can capture. Rook e8, a little bit slow, like the same thing. So, here, one of the concepts... The Ruski talks a lot about, and I learned exclusively from, from him, is superfluous square. Here, e5 and f3 are corresponding superfluous squares. Yes. So, not capturing actually, I moved the knight to g6, not letting the other knight come into f3. And then I go bishop f6, and then the other knight jumps to e5. But he. But now we know, I know that we were both talking about the same book because Greg was on <laughs> right, right on the spot, the, the super fluid square. Well, I now, gave the wrong move. <laughs> what's that? I gave the wrong move, though. Well, but you, you, you had the right concept in mind. <laughs> so, and then and then now uh, knight must go to f1, and really after after knight f1, uh, let's just go bishop f6, and then my, and then you can start rolling because there's no knight going to c4. You can start c4, knight c5, maybe we see. And then a lot of pressure coming uh, his way. So, anyways, uh, a four is the most principal line. The other one, uh, okay, here it is. After I lost this game to Sam, which is a very heartbreaking end. If if we get to the end of it, if we get enough time to get to the bottom of the game, to the end of the game, I really spent time analyzing this, and I found this new idea, knight h two. And guess what? Later on, I used this as white against uh, Naroditsky, Daniel, and it was the U.S. Masters uh, Armageddon to win to def to decide who will be the U.S. Player Champion of the U.S. Masters, and actually I'm going to show you this game because uh, um, it's actually an interesting game. So Knight H2, Bishop F6. So this was played by by, uh, by me Knight H2, which is an interesting idea. It's still A4 is the best move in my opinion, but this is an interesting one. Let me flip the board because we are looking at it from the white side now. Knight H2. Uh, I played knight df1, which is not good. Uh, sorry, he played bishop f6 first. He played bishop f6. And here I just had to go 
uh, f4 actually knight g6 and then knight df3 and then uh this is not this guy's coming to g4 and this is just a very strong attack coming so but uh, there's an interesting line to show here knight df1 rook e8 rook b1 i'm kind of preparing the move to b3 he plays c4 and he was playing fast and good f4 knight g6 uh, knight g4, knight c5. Also, this is a blitz, so it's, the quality is not really there. Knight f6, queen f6, here, here, bishop e3. And actually, surprisingly, this is not a blunder, although bishop d2 was better, and black white is clearly better. So here I blunder knight h4, but uh, things are, are far from clear. Queen g4. Oh. I think his zoom froze. Oh. Before he gets back, what do we do after knight to c4? What do we do? Probably it's like knight bishop takes knight g3 and then knight h5. Looks interesting, right? <laughs> oh no the board's gone but you're no, back he, re he reconnected yeah sure. uh maybe bishop c8 after knight g3 i was thinking okay can you see me yeah sorry about that i don't no, know no why, it, why why it keeps crashing i'm very sorry i'm sorry about that i don't understand why it keeps is crashing. it is it zoom that keeps crashing yes zoom keeps crashing I, yeah I'm it connected. happens no it happens for me too i don't know why it's just something that it started to do lately yeah, zoom, look, I'm connected on both computers, and still it keeps crashing. And it happens in the, on my on my desktop too. It, it happens on both of them. Okay, so what are the moves? So here, after do you see the board after Queen G4? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, uh, he made a small mistake. This is a very difficult question. If I if I were fair, I should have given you 15 minutes to figure it out. So, but I'm not fair. Okay, um, so knight e4 doesn't work actually, and that's what he played. And uh, I'll show you what happened after. But the, but the right move is um, the right move is oh, actually, is like this I go knight e4, uh, I don't go knight e4 first, I go h5 and then I take. But this is a blitz game, you're saying? Uh, this is well, it's a, like a 10 versus 7. It's okay. game. Very, very hard to find h5. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, at this point, he had like three minutes less than me, but he was already like four, two minutes above, I mean, I ahead, ahead on time. Mm -hmm. So, so actually, he had to go take. Oh, sorry, not that, not that, not that. Excuse me. Knight e4 takes and then h5. Oh, yeah, it's impossible. That's very hard. And the point is that the deflection, this is square, because in the actual game, he took mm -hmm. on e4. And then the knight jumps to g3. Yeah. We solved this while you were um, while you yes. were crashed. And, and <laughs> I really crashed, right? And then yeah. after this, and after this knight h5, this is a, this is difficult for black already. So he has to go h5, which is again another concept of superfluous. I mean, basically, I'm filling this square with the queen, and then the rook goes to e4. So after knight g3, there is no knight h5. Anyways, I don't want to go any further. After that knight, knight g3, things just started going my way, and I won the game. Point is that I analyzed the position and I came up with some new ideas. For example, if we go back to knight h2, am I going too fast? By the way, it's a question. Am I going too fast? No, no, it's okay. You know, some moments will be fast and then some will be slow. All right. So knight h2, uh, knight. Okay, bishop of six is not the main line. So after knight h2, they go knight g6 again. Knight g6, knight df1. So it's very funny. Both players are moving away from the key squares. This was the superfluous for white, and this was for, for black. So they both are kind of moving away from it. Mm -hmm. So uh, then then here is the main line, bishop g5. And uh, I'm going to flip again. And here I have a novelty for you uh, because uh, I like you guys. Uh, I, I like Greg, actually, to begin with. But, <laughs> but here's a novelty. So this is considered... If you go to any book, it says 
uh, unclear. But white is better here. So you go bishop takes g5. It's a novelty to this move. Bishop, queen takes g5. That I cooked up only for this class. Mm -hmm. uh, takes and then Wait, g5. Time out. Can we can we delete this video from the internet? No, like pause it right now. What's what happened? We, we, no, we put the we put the video up online after. I'm like, we can't let everyone see this. All right, no, yeah. no, we're streaming this to thousands of people. Everyone close. Everyone watching, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your ears. Well, I mean, they're, they're they're welcome to because this is not the main line. Nobody plays it as much, so yeah, the likelihood of happening. But G3, and the point is that there's no knight f6. Now, everyone, let's see if you can find it. Why to play? And it has all to do with, uh, here's the key point. These guys are kind of cramped. You have to take advantage of that. Be careful about the pins too, guys. No way. Oh, uh, Brian, G4, seriously? No. All those holes, F4, H4. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm, I'm muted in Zoom, guys, so I can, guys, I can talk to you. You have to worry about, about my heart uh, condition, too, guys. <laughs> okay. If we go Knight F3 yeah. and G4, then they, they sack. Yeah, they have an answer. H4, Knight takes an H4, uh, F4. Daniel, to talk about it. Queen G6. Sure, I'll unmute him. Or you can, do you know how to do it, or do you want me to do it? I, I don't see. I, mean, I, have I got to, it. I got it. Actually, okay. Daniel. Cool. Um. So first, I thought f4. Um. But then I realized after knight takes f4, h4. There's knight h3 check, which is kind of annoying. So then you go h4 first instead. And after they take with the knight, then you can go f4. And then after queen g6, e5. And I think you should be doing some good exactly. stuff. Exactly. And after h4, if I go queen h5, what happens? I didn't calculate this far. Let's see. Uh. H4, let me show you that. So he's right. If I take F4 and then here e5. The <laughs> so, but here's a question. Uh Queen H5. Takes takes now, four, takes gives us some advantage. That's good. That's good. You also you also can do something as another superfluous square to, to, to trap this guy. You can go queen d2, f4, and bishop d1. Okay, that's, that's pretty. <laughs> Sounds gorgeous, no? That's yeah. crazy. Sounds good. Okay, so this is it, H4. So G3 with the idea of H4 and uh, white is better. So we're done, Greg. Spanish is refuted. Done. Let's go to the next opening. Oh. But I play it. Yeah, me well, too. I, play, I play the Marshall more. Yeah, you see our principle. You see, again, nice guy. We yeah. GMs play this... Grandpa chess, nobody likes. Ah. Mm -hmm. But I really, I, I also, okay, I don't want to talk about it now, but uh, you have some good games you posted on on, uh, on Twitter. They were really oh, yeah, I only post good games. Every game I lose never makes it to Twitter. <laughs> only the best one. There was one good one against the one, some Russian gym. It was really good. Actually, I put it in my article. Thank, you. Thank yeah, you. I, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, but I, the tactics are really good, actually. Uh, okay, so... So, um, but that was an A4 Marshall, not a regular one. Okay, um, so let's go back. Let me go back. Uh, all right, so this knight h2 was my move, but uh, not, not my move. It's been played some other times, but then once I got to play this opening, I took it seriously, and I picked it up from white side, and I scored a very important win winning Armageddon. Okay, it wasn't an extra cash money or something, but it was a title. So. And... It wasn't all going to the, uh, to, uh, all the credit doesn't just go to the opening. You just don't win by playing the, a, a new idea. But it was, I think, a good thing to, to play. So um, knight e5, uh, another move here is to play knight x e5 and a4 later. But that will take a long time and I, we will be behind a lot. So I want to show you the end of the game. So we go knight e5, as, as he, uh, sorry, he, uh, we go a4 as he played. And then here I have two choices. I can go rook, rook b8 or uh, bishop bishop to b7. Just to tell you what's the difference if I take on e5 and then play a4, the difference is that if I take first and then play a4, then he has an, an extra option, which should be 7 which is not a good move, but it's an extra option. So better to play a4 first. 
So a4, and in this game, again, if I were to go through just through p8, probably we will, the class will be over. So I will not be able to finish uh, everything. If you have time, I'll go get back to it. Uh, I'm going to follow bishop b7, which is what I played. What's the problem with this one, guys? Someone would like to explain it to me. What's wrong with bishop b7? It looks very, it looks very ugly. Well, the bishop, the bishop is misplaced. Uh, can I do anything about it? What? Because because then rook b8 is better. But why do I put the bishop on b7? What what can I do about it? What's the cons and pros? Yeah, my only real pl plan is to play f f5. Someone Arnav Gupta said that. Mm -hmm. That's that's my plan. And why do I play bishop b7 over rook b8? Because then if I go rook b8, oh sorry, let me. Uh -huh. If I go rook b8, then any moment white wants, it can go a, b, and then the rook comes to my home. That's why I don't play rook b8. There are, again, cons and pros. It's a playable move. So, I play bishop b7, and uh, and Sam lashed out moves as well. Knight e5, this, f4. Knight g6. Knight f3. All right. Now, I have to invite him. For a fight, because if I don't play, next one is he wants to play f5, right? Correct. Are we good on that? Everybody, everybody, I think agrees that f5 or e5 is e5 is not coming because I am preventing if e5, uh, e5 by attacking the pawn on d5, right? So if if he goes e5, we can take and that one is not angry. But if he goes f5, then my bishop is dead forever on b7, right? I cannot go f5 because he goes e5. My knight doesn't have a good score. So what I need to do is to provoke him to come forward. So I played bishop f6, which is a correspondence uh, move. Uh, you know, those players playing with, with the engines running 24-7. Really did, did a sport. <laughs> Engine playing versus engine. So who has a better hardware wins the game. So bishop f6, but, it, but the idea is that I want to play this move. Basically pinning down this bishop, defending the, the pawn on b2, right? And I'm planning to play rook e8, preventing the move e5 from happening, right? So if the bishop on b7 is bad, but the bishop on c7 is also stuck, right? That's the trade-off happening here. So after this, um, if he sits and waits, then I can play rook e8, queen c7, and gradually improve my position. But that's not what, what happened. And uh, he played e5. All right, wait a second. What did I miss here? All right, I'm going to flip the board from now on, all the questions from Blackstar for, for a while. So what has happened now? Is it losing now? Well, E5 looks very annoying. So I, I, I see comments, and this is uh, a very similar one. Uh, my, my, right now, my highest rated uh, student is like 2450 FIDE. Uh, sorry, 2450 USCF, 2350 FIDE. And, uh, and everyone here gets frightened. Okay. Royal Buchanan, I'm sure. Is that a name? Yes. I'm not sure. Is that? Okay. He said bishop e7. I would like him to elaborate, talk about why bishop e7 is a good move. Well, here, I'm going to unmute. Real, Real, do you have a mic? I can't remember. Oh, Real doesn't have a mic ready, so we got to ah, ask somebody okay. else. So, anybody wants to talk about bishop e7 except Royal? Greg, what do you think? Aryan wants to talk about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna unmute him. Who was? Okay. Aryan. Okay. After Bishop E7, quite unfavorable to play E takes D6 for White. It's it's so you're saying are you for Bishop E7 or against Bishop E7? Four. All right, and why why is that? Because 
if you play is e takes d6 then bishop takes d6 okay uh, and that, uh, that, that, understand d5 is weak. weak well what about if he plays e6 e6 then uh f takes e6 Mm -hmm. And then all the pieces are, are going to be open. So one, the, the reason I asked this question, it seems like kind of obvious. I have to go back. First thing is that a lot of time when we play, we have a hard time playing a move and going back. For example, you go bishop b5 and you put the bishop there. If they go, I don't know, bishop b7, people go a4. They want to keep the bishop there. They have a, they have a hard time with the concept of going back. And uh, for several reasons, we have to do that. And going back doesn't mean that you kind of did something wrong. Things changed. Then you have to do something different. So, this was a, what what I call. I mean, probably. I mean, it makes sense what I, what I call it, but I don't know if there's an actual name for it. A provocative maneuver. I'm trying to drag him to kind of invite him to play the move uh, e5, which kind of loosens the base of controlling this square. Right. This was a this was a power move before, and now it's a, not exactly a power square. It's now under attack. So after move bishop e7. Okay, I understand that. Both bishops are open. The center looks very dangerous. But d5 and take on d5 is a threat now. Okay, someone asked about... Yeah, that's a good question. If I go bishop h4, yeah, I just can take and then uh, just play bishop e4, queen f3, and gradually improve my position. Uh, when you're under attack, it's very important to preserve your two bishops. And it sounds maybe weird because, okay, I'm not, I'm not saying to do that you're under mating attack, I'll preserve your two bishops. No, not like that. But if you can, because at some point, because your opponent is overextending, the game may open up and then you can use your bishops in, 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 in those situations. All right, bishop e7 was split. We're still in theory. Actually, the theory hasn't ended yet. It just has begun. So, uh, and then you play bishop e4. Okay. Black to play. Now, can I just sit and wait, guys? I have to do something drastic. Why? I have less space. White is dominant in the center, right? And he's coming forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arnav, do you want to talk about it? Arnav, okay. Uh, let me see if I can unmute you. Okay. Uh, who are we who are we unmuting arnav arnav yes all right i got it okay i got it okay actually this one i did actually okay okay arnav i'm listening so when you play f5 either the bishop on e4 gets kicked back or the bishop on e7 gets active on f6 well he cannot go back right because you take on e5 and take on d5 correct mm -hmm. oh right yeah so he has to do on this. Yes, to on which means that oh, his center is gone. His center is gone, and my bishop sits here. How? That's good. That's very good. Okay, now you can mute, and then we can continue from here. So take stakes, but now the setback of putting the bishop on b7 kicks in, and that is the fact that he can play bishop f5. And look, now he's planning to put it on e6. I cannot play bishop d4 check because he just take it, and defends the bishop. So he plays there, and now he's planning to put the bishop on e6. So now I have to kind of fight it. So I play bishop c8. He goes bishop e6 check. Now, to take or not to take, that's the question. Another question. <laughs> Are we afraid of this move? Bishop takes g6, h, uh, h takes g6, and uh, a takes b5. We're not. We go bishop b6, queen b6, and I get all the compensation. Now, we gave up one pawn, but look at, now we preserve the two bishops. Look how, look how they become active all of a sudden. Looks good. So, for the for sacrifice pawn, we have a very good compensation. So, he, plays, he played bishop b6, of course. And at this point, guys, we're going to move 23. How much time... Do, you think I have how much time Sam had? And it was a one, one, 30, one hour, 30 minutes game with 30 seconds increment. Can you guess how much time he had, how much time I had? No time. <laughs> Five minutes each. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I had uh, I had one hour thirty six minutes. Sam had <laughs> one hour forty five minutes. So we just had a cumulative time. Now we're just uh, putting time on. We're just punching the clock. So so I played take stakes and um, and I played b4 which is a good move because now he wants to take and take on d6 so this is a good move I played b4 then Sam played this this and that here is the end of my, my theory but Sam again played another, another move g4 he was one move ahead of me he played the move g4 look at this this looks like a Christmas tree, but with two called different colors, huh? <laughs> kind of, not exactly. Okay. Well, uh, you need a pawn on a three. Yeah, I need a pawn on a three. Yeah, uh, it. Sam's fault. He, he had to play a three instead of. You could go rook to a three next move. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind it that. Do I? So, all right. So g four. Now um, here, I spent forty minutes, and I blundered. So. Expecting everyone finding the move is not fair. Uh, it's a very <laughs> complex position. Well, let's give everyone 45 minutes to think oh, about I think it. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great... But I wanted to say one lesson I learned from this game. Lesson number one. Knowing the theory isn't enough. You have to know the final position of your theory and play training games in it. That makes you an expert in the position you play. I had seen this position two days before this game for the first time. And I thought my analysis, two days analysis, was good enough. Maybe it would be good enough to play, I don't know, online game or against the, I don't know, some players my level. You're playing Sam Shankland. You cannot afford just no theory. He he just, actually, his way of playing F5, G4 is not necessarily the best way to play. But it's a hard thing to deal with. So lesson number one, you want to, again, uh, saying it again. You, you want to play an opening, you have to be an expert in it, especially these days. I know I know uh, Greg is not a big fan of the, the, the engines, uh, but we have we shared one thing in common, for example. We don't never never let go of the uh, of beating uh, beating uh, Scandi. That's 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 called, um, that's very important. That's very important. So you have to know your your stuff against Scandi. So but you have to know it. That, that's my point. You have to know what you're playing. That's important. So I played the right moves until this point, but I didn't know what to do here. I spent 40 minutes oh. and I played the move d5, which is a mistake. Actually, it's almost a losing mistake. That's what so, I would do. <laughs> in fact, this deserves two question marks. And it's a very natural move, right? Looks natural looking move. First of all, guys, g5 doesn't matter because I play bishop d4 check. But what should I have done is that I had to play more active. I had to go c4. Why did this move even cross my mind? Because I wasn't prepared mentally to, to play against g4. And I was worried about g5. But now I have a should be 5. And f5 is well, well, well protected. So, so I had to go c4. And I have three pages of analysis in here, just here, to, to see if c4 works or not. And c4 works. But I want to continue. So d5. And here now he's, he's clearly better. Queen e2, which is a mistake. He had to go knight e5 first. I don't want to discuss why this is a small mistake, but this, knight e5, c4, bishop f4. And, uh, all right, this one is a, is a difficult question, so I'm not going to ask this one, but I'm going to play black plate c3. Now, from white side. I'll give everyone three minutes. And, uh, and what we can learn here is that uh, what we can... Okay, I learned. What I can give you as a hint is that uh, white is winning. Hmm. Yeah, I'll give you three, four minutes on this. White is winning. Uh, 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 keep looking, guys. Keep looking. It's a, it's it's a difficult one. I mean, Sam missed it, so it's gonna be difficult then. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> it all has to do with the fact that the bishop on the fort is not protected. Right. 
Yeah, knight g6 is like too obvious. I guess knight g6, black goes queen b6 check, bishop b3, d4. If you guys give me a line, I see some some of the players mentioned the right move, but I need a line. If you can write two, three moves in, in, in a row, like not just one move, then I can kind of consider your answer and you can talk about it. We can defend the bishop with like queen f2. Aryan and Kevin, ha they have a good move. But um, not sure. I mean, Queen F two is interesting because it threatens Knight G six as well as maybe, maybe some G five ideas also. As well as Knight D seven, so it covers the diagonal. You can also try King H one, like someone suggested, because King H one then we are threatening Knight G six, and Black doesn't have a check. Daniel, your answer is close. There's a really sharp position. I don't know. Yeah. So Daniel has already talked about it. Kevin. Uh, um. Should I? How, how should we do it? Should we ask the people? Uh, should we ask the person who has answered it correctly, or we want to give everyone a chance? Yeah, we can go ahead and ask that because we don't have that much time. So we can go ahead and ask the person. Okay, so Daniel, okay, so you can say it, Daniel. Sure, I unmuted him. Yep. Um, so I thought the move was queen f2 just to protect his bishop so we have some discovery tricks. Queen f2, uh -huh. nailed it. And queen nailed f2, it. guys, not only defends the queen, the bishop, but also covers all the yeah. checks. See that? Exactly. Okay, keep going. And then I thought I c2, b2 and rook d1 because we don't really need to take this pawn. It's not important right now. It's not important, but you can drag my rook away, but so just, just put it here. But the rest yeah. of it, what you rook say is correct. And after yeah, rook b1, what's happening? Easy. What's right. my threat? And then I said queen d8, because there's nowhere else to go for the queen. Okay, and the knight d7, correct? Yeah. And then you take the bishop, bishop e5, take on b2, and your pawns will start rolling. Exactly. Okay, good. Very good. Very good. You can mute it. And then, yeah, that's, that's how he could just finish me off. Huh? So, but that's not what happened. So BC, BC, first that gives me this extra score for my queen. That made me happy. And uh, then he played queen d3, which is really not a good move. He still could go queen f2. Now I'm back to, in the game. So I play rook c8. And then uh, he kept, I mean, he had to go rook c1, just making sure that he keeps the pawn at bay. So, but he played bishop g3, which is, Still an okay move. It's not like losing, losing, but it's actually it's, it's a bad move. It's a bad move. It's a waste of time. So I went c2. And now there's no knight d7 because I go queen to b4. So I play rook a c1, but that one is, is a little bit too much now. Now, I'm this is the only part of the game that I can be proud of. So I'm going to flip the board. Now, three moves. I just asked you white is winning. Now I'm asking black is winning. Black is winning. So we make a ton of blunders too. Now uh, here, uh, black to play. I'll give everyone two, three minutes. So then we'll have time to wrap it up. But this is a brute force tactic. This is everyone can see. Okay, brute force tactic, guys. We got this. Easy. Forcing moves. Let's go. Let's go. What do we got? D4, rook c3, queen b6 check. Knight c6, bishop takes c5. What are we doing? Queen b4. Bishop h4 is bishop h4 a move? Doesn't really feel like now, it. Now, with the pawn on c2, you also have to think about the fact that the king is not that safe. So you can combine the the fact that the pawn is well, well advanced with the uh, with some with some tricks against the king. Hmm. 
Uh, good try, but now I, I still don't see any answer yet, guys. But take your time. Mm, no answer is no, 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 no. None of the answers are correct so far. No answers right so far. And this is a very important one, guy, because, guys, because the right move is plus four. The second move is uh, white is slightly better. The third move, white is winning, uh, according to engine's choices. So Yikes. third move, white is already better, not winning. White is already okay, better. Okay, we have so suggestions have of to play the right move. queen b6 check and then queen b2, running rook c3. Wow, that's pretty annoying, guys. Nice find. Right now, white has a threat of playing knight d7, by the way. So queen b6 if bishop f2, queen b2, bishop d4. Do we have something there? Queen b6, bishop f2. Queen b2, bishop d4, right? Uh, Troy, you came kind of close, but no, your line is not exactly right. But you kind of have a good... Okay, um, if you, since we don't have that much time, I think we, we're going to give it to Troy, although his line is not exactly correct. But he has, his first move is correct. He's the first one who mentioned this move. So I'm going to... Oh, that's not good. I'm sure everyone mentioned the previous check. Troy, where is he? <laughs> Maybe Bishop G5? Okay. Go ahead. Troy? Oh, Queen B4 looks like a nice idea because then we can go Rook C3. Oh, Queen B4. Exactly. And, um, and, the, and after Queen B4, why can't he take on C2, guys? What, what do you think, Troy? Can you look at the board? Well, I'm, I'm thinking um, rook takes c2, queen takes c2. Look at, the board again. Take... look at the board again. Look at all the geometry on the board. Oh, yeah, I can just take an e5. Take on e5, and if he takes with the rook, ah, this then we was can the, go cunning, queen b1, yeah. the yeah. cunning idea here, yes. He cannot take with the bishop back, and if I, he takes on c8 first, I just play this check. Trade the pieces, and then I'm off a piece. Oh, okay, right. queen d4. Oh, man. I don't know if, if, if bishop d4 is a stronger, but my plan at the board was that I play just trade uh, of a piece, and then this is winning. Probably bishop d4 is even stronger. Probably. Wow, what a trick. Because the king is exposed. So after this, he cannot take on c2. Now I have the threat of playing rook c3, and there's no defense against it. Now, yeah, I thought white could take on c2 winning. here. Now, look at this position seven moves later. I'm, I get checkmated with black. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Wait a second. All right, so Troy, let me put you on mute again. Good job. Brutal. That was tough. So queen b4, king h2. Now we are both in time pressure. So remember, 10 moves earlier, we both had more than one hour, 30 minutes. At this point, we made all the mistakes we were making both right and left. Okay, he had about 30, 40 minutes. I had I had less than 10 minutes at this point. So rook a c1. Uh, sorry, uh, king h2. Rook c3, of course, right? Queen d2. Queen b3. Oh, that's fantastic. Queen g2. Ooh. Then... Uh, he has this threat, so I'm just going to play bishop g5, right? Knight d7. And uh, why not rook fc8, huh? Well, first of all, I don't even need that. I can just go d4 and just push the pawn. But okay, rook fc8, I'm in time pressure. And now, rook fc8, three moves to go, and I have like less than a little bit less than five minutes. Rook fc8, and he plays bishop e5. Okay. Here comes the tragedy for me. But before that, I want everyone to prove that how 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 much better you are than me. So black to play and win. Well, we can take on C1. I mean, bishop c1. If bishop takes c3, we have bishop okay, f4. I didn't lose check. on 40. I lost on 42. But it was bishop c1, on bishop c3, bishop f4 check, and then queen takes c3. So that's good. Rook e3 also interesting. Yeah, one of the good move. answers are d4, rook d3, Troy said. Yeah, that's one of the good answers. But after d4, what about f6? d4. Wow. d4 takes rook no d3. Big deal. D4, F6 is the line they're thinking. Rook D3. Rook D3 is actually not. 
Hook T3 is is also winning actually. Actually, the thing is that it's so winning that even if I don't move, if I once put the position as black as white to play, it is still plus two for black, minus two. So <laughs> it's a it's a it's it's a very winning position. So D4 works. And f6, g takes f6, that also works. But the easiest way, and uh, this is just work f3. I like this one. Prevent f6 in time pressure. Whoa. And then play d4. And that's game, just game over. And, and just take on c1, then play d4, whatever. Work Pro f3. Black, in time pressure, the most important thing is to stop your opponent's counterplay, especially when there is a threat. And Sam pointed out immediately after the game was over. And that's a good way of thinking. That's a killer. So, cold blooded. but what I did is, is a blunder. I went rook e3, rook takes e3, <laughs> and oops, oops, I cannot take, I had to I had to take with the queen and make a draw. Rook c2, bishop f4, and give it perpetual. I played bishop e3, and now he played f6. And f6. Wow, Good what roll. did I do? So, here, I had to go queen e3. I saw a draw after that. I, I saw that I can make a draw if I take queen takes e3. I can take take and play d4, and there's no check, and I have bishop f4. So I, I'm gonna show it actually. Oops. And then d4. There's no check. I, I trade the bishops when I need. Uh, I play queen e3 back. I want to play d3. The activity and exposure of the king to checks gives me enough to, to make a draw. And I saw that. And when you see your advantage is gone, don't fall for what I call sunk cost fallacy or escalation of commitment. I mean, I committed to win this game or I've invested so much to get this winning position. I've got to make it happen. The chess is a very humbling game. So do what the position tells you, not what you feel like to do. Mm. So rookie three, big time blunder, this, this, and now I move 40 with the minute on the clock. I didn't see knight, 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 uh, knight g6 is a draw. Still with a lot of analysis, it's going to be a draw f7. And uh, this is actually working for me. Queen f3, knight back g6. This is a draw. I thought he takes on g7 and I get mated, which wasn't the case. So what happened is that I took on f6. And after knight takes f6, I resigned. Because he got, just goes king f1 and I get mated. Wow. The um, the tragedy of move 40th. Can you knight show us how you get mated here? Uh, here and then here. Then knight, knight b7 is coming. Sad, 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 huh? Whoa. 97. <laughs> Queen of seven. Oh, man. Bishop on e5. So strong. That was tough. That was very tough. So, should I have some concluding words or I have to show some more lines? Oh, yeah, totally. Totally some concluding words. Like, so what do you what do you learn when you lose a game like this? And what do you try to do to improve on it in the future? All right. Actually, one thing is that the reason I chose this game is that I didn't learn enough. My one of my main problem in chess is that I miss critical moments move. Like I see tactics, my tactic is not that bad, but I see critical tactics. I miss critical tactics. It happened in the U.S. Championship against Jeffrey Xiang, yesterday against Andrew Tang, and in many other occasions. And uh, that's one kind of a tactic I have to work on. I have to ask someone give me the same kind of tactics, work on it, or on chess.com. I don't know, but the thing is that there, there's a, it, is, it is randomized. But my problem is that critical ones when there is first move the second move is not as good oh there's a Wait, what, what do you mean by that like, oh you're saying a tactic when if you don't make it it's much worse move or it, well i miss the finishing lines basically so like you get a good position and then you have trouble like completely finishing the game well this positional my positional technique is is okay tactics if they're they're like regular tactics are fine but in this case I had a, a little bit of a weak king, and then it was a bit of a time pressure, and I just had to kind of think about two, three concepts at the same time, and I got a bit mm -hmm. confused. Yeah. The same thing happened yesterday against uh, Andrew Tang, and against Jeffrey, uh, I'm completely winning in the US Championship. Much more difficult, but it's still the same. Six, seven minutes mm -hmm. on the clock, and I, I couldn't exactly see all the concepts at the same time. So these, these moments, I have problem with, and it's been the case for the past few years at least so um i have to see how much of it one more question how much of it would you uh, like chalk up the time pressure well in this one is time pressure because i 
I had less prep That's than a good uh, Sam, so mm -hmm. I got 40 minutes behind on the clock. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a totally another question? So the move where you spent 40 minutes, and it turned out right. you didn't make the best move anyway. Do you feel like you should have spent less time? Yes. Okay. And I had to play it intuitively. That's, mm -hmm. that's a very important and good question. Because when you cannot see everything and the position is really complicated, we're not machines. We cannot come up with a an absolute solution. So you have to rely on your gut feelings. But then when you get to one of these positions, if you had like 15 more minutes. I definitely like, would have seen it. Yeah. yeah. So, not even 15, five more minutes. I had sure, like but 15 would be nicer. Because you know, I was when I was doing commentary for the U.S. your your tournament actually. Robert Hess was playing against uh, Narodisky, and Robert got down like two minutes to forty-five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And he just in the end, he just couldn't find he just couldn't find the right moves, and I, he basically lost the game because he spent forty minutes in the opening when it didn't. His position was less complicated than yours, I admit. But he spent a lot of time just like figuring out where the rook should go, where the you know, like just kind of like small decisions in the beginning of the game. Yeah. And then when the big decisions came, he just had no time left to to deal with them. It, well, I, I mean, he's also I, I'm not I I do not have that problem exactly like Robert, but he's also a bit of a perfectionist. He mentioned that in the interview. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I mean, yeah. yeah. He, he he wants to kind of like playing it very. But if you are like that, you either have to know the opening or you just have to let it go and make a move so that you can preserve some time. Mm -hmm. Wow, so I figured him out quite, quite, quite well. I, I <laughs> take some credit for that now. <laughs> oh, yeah, you played a good game against him, right? Uh, well, I played on his psychology. He wants to play like a fighting game, principal game, and he didn't want to make a draw. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he didn't know how to make a draw because there was a forced line so he could make a draw. And okay. then he, will, he ended up in a slightly worse position and then that's not Robert who plays like the worst position. Mm -hmm. So I just I just got lucky he walked into something that he was not prepared for. But it's I mean I take it, right? Luck is a good thing. Yeah, sure. But, but it's a it's a very good point you made about uh playing these moves faster. Nowadays it's even more 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 important, I think. In uh in chess to play faster, even less accurate, but uh, but faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's funny, that. like, a lot of times when somebody spends, like, a huge amount of time on one move, they don't make the right move, I find. I... Like, three minutes is a long time, right, to spend on one move. And I feel like when, when that happens, a lot of times, it's just, you know, you could have just moved in five minutes, and it would have been the same move or something just as good. That's why you have to have a feeling for the position, because I hadn't played any training games. This was the first time it was happening for me over the board, yeah. this position. Okay. So I was basically new to it, and I was I thought that I played so many good moves, I didn't make any any mistake in the opening. So mm -hmm. there should be a solution to it. Then suddenly I became the perfectionist. Robert is by nature. I'm not, but then suddenly I just was in that shoes, in the, those shoes. Mm -hmm. So Elshan, so, that means you're you're in in favor of training games when you're learning a new opening. Absolutely. Yeah. I I play training games with uh, with Shaba for the game ten we qualifier. Oh. oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Huh? I, I played with Shaba and uh, for US Championship also I played with Shaba some and uh, with uh, Golding. Oh, cool. That was, but that was, when I played in the tournament, I really realized the difference in the class and level. <laughs> yeah. And really strong players. They're very strong players, but things have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but for the game 10, really playing with Shaba helped me. In fact, in fact, training games, now mentioning that, my game against the, uh, the last, uh, the, the, the penultimate round in the first stage of qualifier, game, game 11, against, mm -hmm. uh, what's his name, uh, Elvis. Yeah. I, I had a training game there uh, against uh, against Shab uh, Shaba. I lost that training game, but I analyzed, analyzed it, and we figured out the line is incorrect for white. And then mm -hmm. he walked into that, Elvis, and I just won in like 20 moves, 15 moves or something like that. That, that would have made a great lecture. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I won that game, so I just didn't want to. Well, show no, you it. show the first. You show the one you lost. And then you show the yeah. training game first, and yeah. then you show. Uh, that's really cool. I really, I really love that tournament, though. That ten-minute tournament. It was kind of a fun event for me. It was. It was both of them. I really like both of them. Second one, I, I didn't like it because I was keep only thinking about qualifying, and making draws, and staying just in the within the 
we didn't uh, have to say. In the last round, I did that. But before that, it was just fun. Like, I didn't expect anything. I wasn't, like, I wasn't really trying to... I didn't think I was going to make the U.S. Championship or anything. I just wanted to have fun and some good competition. It was... I thought it was really... I only really expected, to get to, the, I expected to, to get to the uh, bracket because I like to play uh, knockouts games. That's that's why. It, for, I, for, like, I don't like it. I don't like to know who I'm going to play beforehand. I just like some random opponent to appear. So I like because I'm playing. I know I'm playing you. I'm like I know you're really good. And maybe you're, did you prepare for me even? Uh, I did, of course. Yeah, it's just annoying. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't like preparing. <laughs> okay, I, I can't understand that. Yeah. You want to know your openings and play them no matter who your opponent is. Yeah, yeah. that's basically what I mean. So that's just the attitude I had going into the match with you. I mean, I did look at some things, but you didn't play any of the stuff I looked at. But, you know, the thing is, even though you didn't play it, though, now I know it better for the future. Yeah. Like, I looked at your Queen D8 French and, like, uh, you know, some Tory attack stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, I had this one prepped for the U.S. Championship, but it never kind of popped up, so... Mm -hmm. And the Petrov is like, I hate the Petrov. I don't yeah. have a very good feel for it, you know? Yeah, but I mean, I looked at Because I was better, and I don't know that. I, when I, I, according to the engine, I'm like much better at some point, and I just don't feel it during the game. I didn't feel that I was better at all. Yeah, it's it's kind of very odd, but you know, I really prepped the Petrov very good. I mean, I have to, uh, have to say, it was very unfair of me. I mean, for a 10 minutes game, guys, I spent like. I look at all of the Petrov's uh, Greg played in the past 20 years, really. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Un but, you know, I got a good position. I, I just don't have a good feel for that opening. But I'm going to get it eventually. Well, that was that was the whole point of choosing it. I don't play Petrov. I oh, don't yeah. play on your psychology. But, so then you didn't have the good Because that's probably why I, I came back and got a decent position. Because maybe you didn't play it that much also. Yeah, but, but it's still, I mean, your advantage didn't cross like 0. 0.50 or something on the engine. Like I was always on the safe side. Oh, I got, I saw it was like plus one or somewhere. But maybe I'm, maybe if just for, just for a moment. For a moment. Okay, I, I'll double check again. I could, I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, but now I know what to do against the, I'm, you know, I'm just takes a lot of games in that opening because not that many people play the Petrov against you. And then when they, it's actually like a really complex opening with so many different lines. So it's like, yeah, well, and, again, yeah. that was, that was a risk I took, but, uh, I, I thought that that's, that could be an annoying choice for a, for a game like this. That's why. Oh I yeah. Think. Super annoying. So, yeah, I mean, I played on that, but you know, when you prepare, you have to take it seriously. I checked your games in chess.com too, actually. Yeah, of course. Me too. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I, I kind of downloaded the games. Yeah, me too. I got a database of a thousand, your last, like, 600 chess.com games. Yeah. But it's okay, because it's good, because I learned, I learned the two lines. Especially the opening you played with white, like, now I have a much better feel for it. Like, I didn't know, I had a fine position, I just didn't know what to do, and I let you crush, I mean, it was a terrible position. Oh, my God. If anyone saw this, it was the worst chess position anyone's ever had. I had it. It was the worst. You you missed the cheapo. I I would say you were you were okay, but you missed the cheapo. Yeah. Well, it was a positional cheapo. Yeah. Can I I want to show how do I move the? Can you show that position I had just because like so people can laugh at me real quick? Oh, please. <laughs> yes, it was so bad. The position, just the end. Just the well, end, you can make I, the moves I, I on the board. You make the moves real quick. I mean, I kind of remember from this moment the position. Okay. Oh my God, this position was the worst. I was like, this is not a good way to start the match. Wow, this was a Petrov? No. <laughs> no, 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 I'm black. This is a, an, uh, like oh, a gotcha. Neo Grunfeld or something. You know, it's uh, funny. I actually beat Nihal Saren in a, in a Blitz game in this line. But yeah, I saw slightly... that, actually. Yeah, but he played a different thing. Okay, that, was on, that was on Lee Chess. Actually. So, yeah, this is the moment. and. Uh... So, I mean, I should go Queen yeah. D six instead of bishop d7 yeah then and then uh this is what happened oh knight a5 terrible move <laughs> so bad. Now, no bishop here because of this and then I, <laughs> and then and then you played here oh, goes. Actually bad. i had to take first but okay this this takes f6 i think you played there 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 back mm -hmm. Then uh... the point you get the pawn to e6. Yeah. Then take the <laughs> so 
And then oh. what happened here? I forgot. I, have to I don't know. I just know that your pawn goes to e6 and that my bishop and rook are like dead. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, the pawn ended up on e6 here. I, here I play e5. What does Maybe, I don't remember how I did it. I mean, obviously I'm already lost. I yeah, was maybe I, I just took first, I don't know, take, and then you played knight c4 again. Yeah, I kept, like, ah. letting you attack my knight for no reason. Yeah, something and like this. The, yeah, and then the pawn went to the pawn. Ah, you you played back. Oh, you made you made this one back and forth several times. And then you played back here, and I would play e6, something like that. I don't that. know oh, if it was no. exactly. I don't know if it was exactly. I would have taken no, no. e5, right? No, no, you would take, take, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't take on e5. You couldn't take on e5, yeah. Sorry, my bad. My memory is bad. So it's okay. The point I think everyone kind of understands what happened. Just imagine so a white pawn on e6, and then the bishop on f8 and h8, and it was bad. Just cheaper was the was the. Yeah, but I should say I saw it as soon as like you started taking things. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be yeah. bad. Yeah, I misplayed the opening. I I messed up the move order. So that's very common. That's another problem I have with my openings. Uh, I prep something, I thoroughly look at into it, but because I need to play training games in them, mm -hmm. I kind of forget them, and then... Yeah, this was my training game in this opening. Because <laughs> I, I, it did help me a lot, because like, I, I looked at... This E3 move is not very common, so I like looked at all the different ways white can set up pieces, and now next time, like... Next time I'll be a little better prepared. A little bit. I'll have... you. I mean, the, the fact that you can play Grunfeld is one of the openings, I mean, enviously... Uh, you can think think of yourself that uh, you are you are a very good player because uh, I cannot play Grunfeld. I I'm, right. I tried it. I just can't. I mean, I have decent result in it, but it's all because I kind of somehow swindled my opponent somehow. It depends on the. I mean, it just it fits my style pretty well. I think. Yeah. And I decided I'm going to play it forever. I'm just never going to switch. So that way, I at least at least I'm going to keep learning. <laughs> Every time I lose, I'm going to learn something, and it's it's not going to be erased by switching to some new opening. Yeah, that's a very good. That's a very good. Uh, that's a very good way to do it. And uh, I just couldn't. Uh, yeah, do that with, with Grunfeld. So yeah. that's one opening I cannot play. If one day I can play a Grunfeld, I feel I would feel so good. Yeah. But that's one opening I cannot play. I believe in you. I think you can do it. I'll try to give you the shot at some point. <laughs> yeah. But um, thanks so much for the lecture. Um, questions from the. I think someone raised the hand at some point.